Hello guys and welcome to my channel. I hope you are well. We have a guest on today. We have Sally Hughes, who is an amazing beauty and skincare journalist at The Guardian. She recently launched her own skincare collection with Revolution Skin. It's really high quality at a great price. I thought it would be really great for us to come up together and have a chat about actually building a foundational routine, talk about beauty, talk about skincare, and answer some of you guys' burning questions. I'm gonna literally just ask you questions okay. like, directly. Okay, We're gonna right. relax into it and like get super comfortable. So let us go into what you actually need to do to build a foundational skincare routine. Walk us through the layers, the products or ingredients that are really essential. So the first thing um, that everyone needs to do is cleanse. Everything begins and ends literally with cleansing. Mm -hmm. And cleansing is the one thing that if you start cleansing properly today, having not cleansed properly before, in seven days time, I'm telling you, your skin will look better than it did. Okay. 100%, nothing else has such a kind of fast result as proper cleansing. Then after cleansing, I always cleanse with a flannel, by the way, Yeah. because that just gives you a really nice glow and it gives you an even exfoliation, not too rough. About two or three times a week, I add in a chemical exfoliant as well yeah in the um, morning in the morning now it's up to you you can do it at night if you prefer I use the tretinoin at night and I feel that's quite a lot to put on my skin at night so I like to bookend them okay. and also a liquid exfoliant gives you glow and I just think why sleep through the glow got it okay I'd like fine. To like, yeah I'd like to see it yeah 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 <laughs> And there you are looking for exfoliating acids. So different acids do different things. Okay. Lactic is a terrific exfoliant, really it. nice and even. It's kind of my yeah, favorite. Yeah. Uh, glycolic is great for glow. Um, Plas has also got tranexamic for skin tone. Salicylic is a really important one if you're on the oily side. Mm -hmm. So salicylic acid is the only acid really that penetrates through oil to clear out blackheads, to kind of clear out congested skin. So that's always good to have in there. Then there are non exfoliating acids that you should have in there like hyaluronic acid lots of people think hyaluronic acid is a scary exfoliating acid mm. it's not it exists naturally in the body to keep things kind of well lubricated so yeah. it's lovely for the skin um, so that's a good thing to add in when you're exfoliating to keep your skin comfy after that I would always treat with a serum now I know there is a fashion now for people using tons and tons and tons of serums I, I personally serum. just think you need one Oh, okay. One in the morning, one at night. You can use the same one twice a day, yeah. or if you're perhaps using retinol serum, some form of retinoid, you can swap that one out in the evening. But you definitely need an antioxidant serum. In my case, I just love vitamin C. I think vitamin C is great for glow. Yes. Um, it's great for everybody, really. Any age, whatever your skin problem, I think vitamin C is a good vibe. It's like the holy grail vitamin C. I love it for like hyperpigmentation and like special occasions. I'm like, yes, let's get my vitamin C on. Me too. And I used to have such bad pigmentation problems and I swear by vitamin C. But again, I want other things in there. I want niacinamide for uh, strength, tone, adding some kind of gentle soothing properties. I want hyaluronic acid for hydration, but I want them all in one bottle because I just, I've got two kids. Yeah. I've got about 12 jobs. Like okay. there's a lot yeah. on. Which and is what you have in your- Must see. In your must see, okay. So in must see, we've got um, vitamin C, we've got hyaluronic acid, we've got niacinamide, we've got ferulic acid. Uh, there's all sorts of lovely things in there that all kind of work together. Then you want some form of moisturizer and sun protection. So you can do that in a number of ways. If I'm outside a lot, I will just use the sunscreen straight after my serum. I'll skip the moisturizer. Okay. What about you? Are you on I the oily side? Put, I know I'm on the dry side, You're on so the dry I have side to put my too. moisturizer on and then a sunscreen on. But I don't like wearing sunscreen in the house. But I know some people no, need to do that. No, I know what you that. mean. So I'm like, mm. no, I would be roughly the same. Okay. If I was at home writing all day, yeah, I probably wouldn't, or I might use a moisturizer with a sunscreen in it. Okay. But for the most part, um, if you're a two-layer girl, so you want some form of moisturizer. In your case, you would be cream drench. The only time in the range you choose is between gel quench and cream drench. Okay. You're on the dry side, so you would choose cream drench. But you can use that day and night, and then in the evening, we just take it all off with Butterclean Cleansing Balm, which has just got loads of natural oils in it to just take away all your sunblock, your sunscreen, your makeup, 
sweat, which at the moment is an issue, serum, moisturiser, bed. And your serum can be the vitamin C again, or you might want to use a retinol, whatever you want to use, but really, really short routine at night. Right, okay. All yeah. you have to remember is cleanse, yep. treat, treat, and protect. Protect. So cleanse with the cleanser, treat with the serum, and protect with the moisturiser and sunscreen. Right, okay. Wow. <laughs> Feels simplified, doesn't it? So we asked you guys to give us your questions on skincare and actually they've all come in and they're actually really good. So I think we'll just go ahead and answer some of these. So this is a big one I get a lot, which is how do you treat hyperpigmentation? It so depends on the cause and your type of skin. So for example, white women and women of color will respond differently to yeah. different treatments. Yes. Um, also, it depends if your pigmentation is from sun damage or whether it's hormonal, like with melasma. And so it depends if things are malfunctioning beneath the skin or whether you have sunspots, as our grandmothers would call them. Right. So there are so many different treatments. Some people need laser, some people can get by with a high strength vitamin C, some people respond really well to retinol. Um, it's a really, really broad chart it depends on the color of your skin and the causes of the pigmentation yeah if you have kind of straightforward light pigmentation vitamin c i would say is the best thing a nice high strength somewhere of 15 percent yeah i agree i love vitamin c for hyperpigmentation and time as well because if it's like due to a spot that you know has left some scarring or like trauma that needs you know a couple of months to recover but vitamin c really helps it kind of break down over time. Yeah, and you'll find that some skin tones really get that marking from a squeeze more than others. Mine does, yeah. for sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's your thoughts around hydroquinone? So I have friends who are, you know, white and they're able to use hydroquinone quite effectively on mm -hmm. melasma mm -hmm. and like sunspots, mm -hmm. whereas actually it's something that is pretty frowned upon in the black community due to the storylines around bleaching being a bad thing. Yeah. But I know that some dermatologists would recommend it for certain things. Yeah, the name of the game with hydroquinone is medical professionals. So if your dermatologist, your medical professional, skincare specialist is prescribe, prescribing hydroquinone, then you will be safe to use it. Yeah. Do not take it upon yourself to try and get hold of some hydroquinone or borrow somebody else's. Um, what can I do to prevent pilling of makeup over skincare? Somebody else saying, I get pilling, why does that happen? So there are a few reasons. Usually, I would say the prime suspect is silicon bumping up against more silicon. Okay. So silicon in skincare, silicon in makeup. You can avoid silicon in skincare. None of my products have silicon in them, and then there are various other brands that are without silicon too. Silicon in makeup is harder to avoid because it's what gives like foundation slip and so on. So if you can take out one of the layers of silicon so they're not bumping up against each other, that's really helpful. Is there a way to prevent milia, those little bumps? So milia are those little white kind of protein lumps on the surface of your skin. Lots of people get them around the eyes. Yeah. Um, I get them a lot. You are more likely to see them in dry skin than you are in oilier skin. Um, so dry skins will get them at their driest points, as I say, around the eyes. Right, right. Um, the best and most effective way, I think, to get rid of milia short of removing them with a needle, which you can have done doing a good facial. You can ask for extractions of milia. But the best thing you can do at home is to use a retinoid. retinoid are brilliant with milia. If I take a break from retinol, say in the summer, I will see such a big difference between when I'm using retinoids um, more regularly in the autumn winter because they are so, so good at keeping on top of milia. Okay. The other thing you can do is as your milia is getting closer and closer to the surface, as you're cleansing, just take some time, wrap your flannel around your finger and just kind of keep buffing it gently yeah. and it will help work it out on right. its own. So you wouldn't suggest like really scrubbing it because I can imagine people seeing like texture on their skin and thinking let me scrub it really hard and hopefully that will clear it out that no, doesn't work over exfoliation will always damage or really runs a high risk of damaging your skin barrier and your yeah. skin barrier is what keeps everything bouncy hydrated healthy and your skin will suffer so much if you compromise that barrier yeah so i've had a few people ask about botox advice you must get asked this at all we all do right yeah, we all do, and um, but not a lot of people like to talk about it um, as much. And it. I feel like we need to talk about Botox and all this kind of good stuff. I'm happy to talk about yeah. it. Uh, so, 
So there are a few things you need to know about Botox. Firstly, Botox, brilliant though it is, and love it though I do. I'm going next week, I haven't had it for six months, I'm desperate. <laughs> like, you know when you're just like really looking forward to a treatment? Yeah. I really need to go. But what people mistake about Botox is that it is not any kind of substitute for proper skincare. It does totally different things. So Botox will have no effect on the quality of your skin at right. all. What okay. Botox does is it relaxes your muscles so that your deep wrinkles don't really show up as much. Okay. Um, it doesn't have any effect on the surface of your skin, your pores or anything like that. It does a very simple job, which is to relax your muscles. And it does it brilliantly. It does it better than any product could ever remove a deep wrinkle. Yeah. For for example, so I get Botox here in what's known as your number 11s, you know, when somebody's yeah. got a number 11 here. Um, so I get it done there, I get it done here. It's worn off, so it's hard for you to see the effects at the moment, but I get it done here. And then sometimes I have it there so that when I smile, my neck doesn't collapse, which unfortunately at my age it is prone to. Um, what I would say about giving tips is Botox, good Botox costs money. If you are invited to a party or an event where Botox is like 50 quid, it is not possible to give someone Botox without cutting corners for 50 quid. And so if you're being offered cheap Botox, I'm telling you now that corners are being cut, whether it's training or equipment or chemicals or insurance or something like that, corners are being cut. So do be prepared to spend money. It is your face at the end yeah. of the day. And there are horror stories where people get, you know, Botox in the wrong locations and then ones that their face is droopy or something goes wrong. And at the end of the day, it is a medical procedure. So it's not something to take lightly at all. Absolutely, and yeah. when you go, always have your consultation with the person who's going to be putting the needle in your face, not a salesperson who then refers you to somebody in another room. You need to speak to the person who's actually doing it. Find out how many times they've done it before, how many patients they see. Ask your girlfriends who get Botox. If you think they look good, find out who they see. And it's really, really, really important that someone is fully licensed in a sterile environment with all sorts around, defibrillators, all the reassuring equipment equipment you see in a medical setting. Yeah. Make sure you have that. Do not pop into a hair salon and do it on a whim. <laughs> Definitely it not. So. Yeah, oh my god, that is very scary. And then what's your thoughts around Botox as being pre preventative? So people in their 20s starting Botox. Like I think it's a little bit a bit, little bit strong, but I also think it depends on the person's skin as well. You're definitely right, it depends on the person's skin. If someone has a very, very kind of hypermobile face and they are gonna be more prone to deep wrinkles earlier on, I completely get why you would want to be preventative. I didn't have Botox till I was like, I think 39 or something. So right, it's up okay. to you. But the idea with preventative Botox is you stop your face moving around quite so vigorously to stop the wrinkles setting in. Right. It's a perfectly valid thing to do, but what I would say is, it is important to have some movement in your face and it is important to have some lines in your face. Having no lines whatsoever and being as smooth as a snooker ball is actually not, it doesn't make you look young, it just makes you look done. Yeah, it looks, yeah, I like that. <laughs> Doesn't make you look there young, three, it makes you look done. There are it. three looks, there's yeah. old, young and done. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, this is a great one. Which affordable brands would you recommend? I think you can go ahead and mention your stuff here. Well, I, I was adamant, I work with lots and lots of luxury brands in my day job, and I was adamant that I only wanted to do an affordable range. That was absolutely top of my list of priorities. Yeah. Because all my girlfriends, some of them have got lots of money, some of them have got very little money, most of them are somewhere in the middle, and every single one of them bulks at a kind of 60 quid serum or an 80 quid serum. Yeah. All of them are like, I've got stuff to spend, I've got to pay for babysitters, I've got yeah. to pay for food, I've got to pay for petrol in my car. And I just thought, actually, I know that I can make everything, 15 pounds and under, and not scrimp on anything. But I'm telling you, you absolutely do not need to spend a fortune on skincare. You need ingredients that work and those come at all prices. Could you walk us through your collection, so okay. what we have here? Okay, should we start at the beginning? Yes. So in the morning, you would use Clean Sheet, which is the morning cleanser. Rub it in dry, add some water, take it off with the flannel. Oat amino acids in there to soothe the skin and soften it. Pineapple enzymes for a bit of glow, not a full-on yeah. exfoliation, but a bit of a pick-me-up glow. Glycerin for hydration and to get rid of any kind of tightness that people are used to with a morning cleanser. None of that here. So simple, no-brainer, tenner. So after that, you would use Placid. Yeah. So you'd use your exfoliant. So in here, you've got five um, exfoliating acids. 
the ones I mentioned before, glycolic, lactic, tranexamic, salicylic, um, hyaluronic, lots of lovely acids in there. Twice a week, you would sweep that over with some cotton wool after your cleanse. Serum, so your treat step. So this is a vitamin C serum, 15% concentration, hyaluronic acid for hydration, uh, glycerin, uh, ferulic acid to support the antioxidants, uh, vitamin E, um, just a one, one step solution. It's all in there, you don't need loads of serums. Then you choose between the moisturizers. So this is the only time you choose. If you are dry and you like a rich, sort of buttery, velvety texture like I do, and I'm guessing you because yeah. you're on the dry side, you would use cream dredge. So this has got ceramides, hyaluronic acid, squalane, glycerin, all the good stuff. It's just like such a great makeup base. No silicon in there so it won't peel. So that's if you're dry. If you are on the oilier side, or if you go to the gym a lot, or if you get hot, or if you're menopausal, and your makeup wanders off halfway through the day, then you would choose Gel Quench. So this is a very similar moisturizer, but this has a gel butylene glycol base. Um, and instead of ceramides, which are kind of creamy and rich, it's got polypeptides. But all of the same kind of benefits, but here we've got a much kind of lighter gel texture. That's kind of, you know, if you like that kind of watery yeah. vibe, you know, you still get plumpness, you can still feel the moisture on your skin. It's not like it disappears and makes you dry the way some gels do. It's just got a much lighter, fresher, yeah. summery texture. This would be great for the hot weather in the summer as well. So totally. I would probably use this rather than this. Totally. Even though I'm dry. <laughs> and you can use this twice a day as your day cream and your night cream. Um, or you could use that in the morning if you like a light texture by day and something richer at night, that's up to you. Then at night, you take it all off with a cleansing balm. I love a cleansing balm. They're the best thing ever. Love a good cleansing balm. Me too. Yeah. Like, I like to take a moment. Yeah. So here, smells so nice. So here you um, rub in like a little fingertips worth of balm, rub it into dry skin, massage to loosen everything, add a little bit of water and it'll turn into a milk. Yeah. Get your flannel, take it away, go back to this, go back to that. That's it. Yeah. So if you're looking for an affordable option, we have one right here. I, I can't believe what you're able to actually get into here. Like the quality of what you're able to get in for the price that you're selling it for. It was challenging. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this came in at, I think this came in at 16, 20, and I was like, no, it has to be 15, it has to be 15. Yeah. So in the end, I took 10 mils out of the thing and made it a smaller pot because it's like, it has to be 15 or under. So it was challenging, but, but great experience to know that every single ingredient counts. I squeaked every last thing in yeah. there. No, that's really important. My question is, can you use retinols long term? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You can use retinols for your entire adult life if you want. Um, sometimes people like to take a break in the summer just for lifestyle reasons. They just kind of feel their skin is putting up with a lot and they decide to take a step back. That's fine, you don't need to, but that's fine. Um, you may decide to change strengths of retinol as you go along. Some people like to start on a 0.03, for example, then move up to a five and so on. Um, that's all fine too, but yeah, there's no reason why you can't use it forever. Uh, and this is a one that came up quite a few times is, what are your thoughts on herbal peels and facial peels? I've noticed a lot of girls now are going in for these, I think they're TCAP peels okay. right now. Some are having great results and some are actually getting burns. Um, thoughts on the peels today? I'm not a fan. I love a peel, but I like a peel with things that we know are safe and in the right quantities. So I like um, an exfoliating acid peel. Um, I like things like lactic acid, which we mentioned before, malic acid, which is in this malic as well. Malic is great, yeah. Um, malic is great, lactic is great. Um, if you're on the really oily side, you might want a higher concentration of salicylic, but these are things we know work. They exfoliate really evenly, they have predictable results. The problem very often with natural ingredients is that people think natural equals gentle, and that is absolutely not the case. There are far more people who are irritated by essential oils, for example, than synthetics. Um, and so we need to be really careful about that. I, I react a lot to natural ingredients yeah. as well. Essential yeah, oils, oof, or I'm allergic to coconut oil as well, which are is- you? Yeah. See, that's quite a, unusual, because yeah. that's quite a bland oil. Yeah, I know, and it's so annoying because it's in like everything, yeah. but yeah. it is what it is. All right. What happens to your skin? I just get like a little rash, and it kind of comes on my ears, uh -huh. and I'm around my eyes, uh -huh. and I know that if I've used something with coconut in it, 
that's what I'll get. That's very interesting because yeah. that's quite an unusual one. Yeah, I know. But I think it might have been just for a period of time, but I definitely know that I have it's that great reaction. That you've identified. Yeah, I had to, yeah. yeah. Dark under eyes. This one came up quite a lot. What do people who naturally have darker under eyes do? So the main reasons that people have dark under eyes are either that they're knackered, like whether they're new mums or they work too hard or all of those things combined, or genes. Dark circles are genetic. If your mum has very dark circles or your dad has very dark circles, you probably will too, and that's the reality. The best way to treat dark circles is cosmetically, not with skincare. There are so many eye creams that say they'll get rid of your dark circles, and I just... No, yeah. I just, I, for me they don't stack up. The best thing to do is do something cosmetic and that is using colour correction. So typically, I'm generalising, but typically a white woman will need like a sickly salmon pink, a brown woman will need a peach, and a black woman will need an orange, typically. There yeah. are some variations, but that's basically what you need. And you need to put a skin tone concealer on top to bring it back round to a realistic colour. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I feel like we really got into it, had a lot to chat about. Your questions were great. You can check out Sally Hughes on her Instagram. I'll have it linked in the description bar below. And your collection, is it in stores as well? Uh, it's like all over or online? It's meant to be in super drug stores, but it's sold out. We basically sold a year's worth of stock in uh, three and a half weeks. Wow. So the best place is online. So Revolution B Beauty.com, Look Fantastic, Beauty Bay, ASOS, River Island, I'm Superdrug.com, I'm Forgetting People, but it's basically available in tons and tons of stockists. I'm sure we can give you the links to whatever. Amazing. We'll have it in the description bar below. Thank you for watching, and in the meantime, I'll catch you later. Bye.